Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Get ready because we have another chef versus normal budget battle and today the dish is lasagna. We're giving our normal home cook Barry an unlimited budget whereas Chef Ebers only has £2.50 per portion. Can it be done? Ebers, answer that question in one word. I hope so. Three words. <laughs> All right, boys, your time starts in three, two, one, lasagna. Okay, Baz, where on earth do you start when money is not an object and you're making a lasagna? I, I had to start with the meat. We've gone to a whole new level. We've got beef cheek, we've got Iberico pork, Iberico bacon, we've got sausages. Cut them all up, brown them all off. I'm treating every cut with the uh, with loving care. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Ebers, how on earth are you going to compete with Baz's dish? Give us the highlights. I'm not going to lie, it's more of a challenge, but in keeping with tradition, I'm going to use both pork and beef products. I'm going to make my own cheese, because that way you can get excellent use out of milk, because I can use it three ways. Wow. I'm bulking out the majority of the ragu by doing kind of half meat, half lentil. And I'm cheating on the bechamel, because instead of making a roux, because butter is expensive, I'm using gravy granules to thicken it and add umami and flavour too. So it's flavour, 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 but lots of cheats and hacks. So to start off with, I'm using garlic sausage because it's got the seasoning, it's got the smokiness, it's got the unctuousness, and I'm going to chop it up and fry it off in oil and then add onion, garlic, mushrooms and carrot to sweat down. My Iberico bacon and sausages are now in the pan as well. Now to deglaze it with some, just some red wine. I'm not really sure if this is, is this a good one. You picked it! He's like, he knows it's a good one, look at him. Are you not going to take the wrapper off before you try and remove the cork? You need to? <laughs> what are you doing to such a nice bottle of wine? I've got some red wine, I've got my masala that deglazed the pan, and then I've gone with some very posh, beautiful beef stock, milk and herbs. And this is giving me the sauce that goes with my what? What's masala? And it's a fortified wine. Beautifully sweet, don't need that much of it in this um, because my tomato sauce would be quite naturally sweet as well. Beef, red wine and stock is all in there. Pressure cooking away so that'd be nice and jammy and ragu-y later on. In the meantime, a fresh and sweet tomato sauce that'll be mixed in with it. Usually when cooking a tomato sauce you put a little bit of fat in the pan and before adding your onion and garlic. We're using bone marrow. This is a bit that I think if I could take anything home, if I could cook in bone marrow more at home, <laughs> I think I would. But I know, I, know, I know that sounds like a baller move, but bone marrow is not expensive. No, no, no. It, it probably is a bit more expensive than just like a glug of oil or something like that, but it's not hugely expensive relative to the flavour you get out of it. I think that's the, the beauty of it. Posh plum tomato sauce. Yeah, San Marzano. Onions, up. garlic, anchovies for umami. Ooh. I think that was one of the things that I learned ages ago when we were talking about how to make the best pizza and we were talking about buying the best things in tins. Yeah. Tomatoes shocked me. Buy tomatoes in tins and buy good quality ones because they'll be more consistent yeah. and better than using fresh tomatoes, which was completely backwards. Yeah, they were tin fresh, so yeah. they stay fresh. Talking of taking things out of tins. Oh. The beef element of my dish is corned beef. Oh. Oh. So good, it's locked away under key. <laughs> Sorry, the, rea the reactions are two very different things. Corn beef reminds me of primary school meals and I used to just hate it. For the same price, the two pound that I spent on this, I could have bought beef mints. I think frozen beef mints I could have got for that price, but it's got so much because it's been frozen water into it. Gonna have to cook it down the ragu so, for such a long time. Actually, this does two things. It's easy, it's the same price, and it melts down into this and makes the ragu in no time at all. So once all this is cooked down, I add in corned beef, tomato paste, and a tin of lentils with all the liquid. My ragu is now gonna bubble away for 15 minutes and it's time to make cheese. So I have bought some smoked cheese, like Bavarian style. It's a relatively cheap cheese. It's gonna give us a lot of flavor because of that smoky creaminess. But I've also bought two liters of whole milk. And if I turn this into ricotta, 
then I will have ricotta to go through my cheese sauce, but I will also be left with the whey, which I can use to make bechamel. So I'm gonna heat it up to about 70, 80 degrees. Can you imagine yourself going, I don't, I can't afford cheese, but I'll I can afford it. milk. Let's make some cheese instead. <laughs> right, I just, that's not something ever into my consciousness. Right, let's talk badges. So if you watch regularly, you'll see that the three of us normals are being tested throughout the year on our kitchen skills or our chef skills. If we can demonstrate those skills aptly, then we are awarded a skills badge. Some of us have been awarded more badges than others. And so therefore, we thought others. today might be a good opportunity to let Barry try and catch up. So Ebers, have you got a badge in mind for Baz? Yes. I'm using dried pasta sheets from my lasagna. Okay. But I figured if you can make fresh pasta well yep. and use that in your lasagna, then you can have the basic pasta badge. Quick tip, we do make a well. I am planning to make fresh pasta. Well, there you go. Which I'm actually really confident at doing. I've, I've done fresh pasta a few times. The bit that I'm kind of doing myself over on here is I'm making it slightly differently this time. I'm making a green pasta involving lots of herbs. Egg yolks, herbs, oil, blitz up into a green puree and then mixing that into my flour but using a food processor. For me, this is where it gets really extravagant. Because I'm tripling, quadrupling the price of what I usually spend on pasta just by doing that. I think that's cock on. Purely because what you're looking for is the, is the texture of slightly dry Play-Doh. We have washed our hands, by the way. Ebers, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you're judging the badge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, you want to knead pasta to get that work in. But if you're doing it with a blade of a food processor, you think of the speed that it's doing. It's doing a similar thing that a dough hook or your hands would do, but at four, five, ten times the pace. <laughs> now that my milk is steaming, it's about the right temperature to add in the lemon juice, pit free, and the salt. Stir it, heat up to boil, Couple of minutes, strain it off. You have one hour remaining. Barry, you look like you've got some expensive cheese there. Yeah, like for me, my, my cheese sauce is all cheese. I'm not like using a, a bechamel or anything else. Pecorino, uh, one pound 41 for that. Two pounds worth of um, Parmesan, aged 30 months. Um, ricotta, smoked mozzarella. Uh, and some mascarpone. So I'm using some expensive cheeses. So just to finish the ragu, I've thrown in some chicken gravy granules. Chicken? Ch and gravy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's got the seasoning the same as a stock cube would have, but also, main ingredient is potato starch. So it's just gonna thicken it up, and therefore, again, the whole speedy cook, you just get there a bit quicker. The pressure cooker has done its job. It looks and smells intense, to say the least. Now I'm going to strain the liquid out of the meat, put the meat in with my tomato sauce, give that a mash, and reduce that sauce down, and then combine it all together. Is my pasta rested now? Yeah, I think so. Here you go, mate. Oh, lovely. So what's, the, what's the imprint? <laughs> so weird. So, pasta to quarters. Uh, now I need to make it to roll it. Ah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That looks oh. like a much better shape, Baz. For my bechamel sauce, kind of, not really, I'm throwing off garlic in oil, and just before it goes that kind of brown colour, I'm going to add in some of the whey and then thicken it with chicken gravy granules. And once it's nice and thick, I'm gonna melt in the smoked cheese. Um, I'm, I'm coming to that point where I might need some help. Do you want a hand? Jamie, you put it in the wrong bit! <laughs> Jamie! Oh, you folded it, Spat. Yeah. That Jamie. wasn't me. You meant to put it in the middle, you put it to the side. Oh, he's done what it again! Is what is wrong with you? My work here is done. Thank you, mate. You've got, got half, half an, an hour. hour. <laughs> right, time is money. I can't wait for Barry. I'm going to start layering mine. So I'm going pasta, ragu, ricotta, 
garlic sausage, then more pasta, bechamel, ragu, garlic sausage. And I'm going controversial, boys. Oh, mm. I don't know about you, but when I grew up, my family always used to fight over the crispy bits of lasagna. Oh, they are good, yes. So I'm deliberately making my lasagna in a large, relatively shallow tray so that there is lots of crispy overhang. Yes, Ebers. It divides people. I put it on Instagram. Some people said it was blasphemy. Some people said I was living dangerously. A lot of people said, best bits, well done, Ebers. If this is the only bit that's blasphemy of your dish, <laughs> then I, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're ziggy zagging. I've got about 20 pence spare from my tray of lasagna. But also, Rainbow Swiss chard's free when you pick it. So, oh, oh, here we go. Treat this a cross between like spring greens and spinach. It does rule a bit, but not entirely. And these bits are wonderful, even just in salads. But by the heat of the pan, they'll soften slightly. I'm now making a salsa verde, parsley, basil, oil, anchovies, and some capers, and a bit of mustard. Drizzle it over some lettuce leaves. Oh, Ooh, nice, simple, nice, clean. Nice. Yeah. 15 minutes remaining, boys. Last 60 seconds. There we go, crispy bits, golden, blistered, delicious. I feel like if I cut this down the middle and then this way and this way, six chunky portions. Six chunky portions and I've spent a ten on it. So if I've got £2.50 per portion, that gives me a fiver to spend. And for 4 99 you can get an excellent bottle Absolutely of Primitivo. Absolutely not, not a chance. <laughs> that is ridiculous. And that, to me, looks like a fairly hefty old whack. Well, you, did, you did pick a tiny plate. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Perfect timing! Okay. Oh, save, save my mic. You have 10, 9, I don't want to rush you, but I am rushing you. 8, 7, oh my 6, God, it's so heavy. 5, five 4, Money 3, out. 2, 1. one. Stop cooking. Well done, boys. Whoa. That looks epic. Let's plate these up, remove a glass of wine, and get them into the sexies. Boys, I mean, all of the dishes, both, but all of them look absolutely stunning. Um, Ebers, let's start with you. How much did this come in per portion? What are we talking? So for that whopping great big tray, I spent less than £10, just, about £9.81, on all those ingredients. So if it's served six, you can throw in a £4.99 £9 bottle of wine as well, and it's less than £2.50 a portion. He'd rather have a small portion of food and a glass of wine. If you think that's a small portion of food, <laughs> it's two meat, garlic, sausage and corned beef, but it's bulked out with loads of veggies, including tinned lentils, and then it's two cheese. I hate to say it, <laughs> or maybe I love to say it, but the lentily corned beef mm. ragu behaves and tastes like a Keats ragu. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it's absolutely what's to be expected from the time, effort and the budget. And it's delicious. No, I genuinely always love these challenges because it makes you think how far can we stretch ingredients without compromising on end taste. Not necessarily tradition, but end taste. I heard that cheeky lasagna crunch. That's excellent. <laughs> the telling point is being able to eat it and not feel like you're losing anything. Mm. There's quite a lot to... There's a lot to do, Baz. A lot to do there. It's all right, because you spent the month's budget. I did. I you spent, have. I spent £78 on my tray. <laughs> and I reckon like, I reckon it would serve six to eight. Cheers. Cheers. It's always important to like let it set up a little bit, especially in this case, because there's, there's so much beautiful fat in this. <laughs> it almost solidifies. It cuts like butter. Yeah. 
Oh. 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 That's not just rich in money, that's rich in oh, <laughs> flavour. You know what? I think it shows more like 10 to 12 people. <laughs> <laughs> I might be done after that one bite. The way you handled that pasta, I kind of knew it was going to be nice and it would cook out well because it was lacy, it wasn't sticking, you were, you were handling it incredibly well and it looked great. I hadn't contemplated at that point the taste of it. Mm. The herbiness you mm. get through that pasta is incredible. That, the rest is heavy. Yes, <laughs> yes. But that's what the salad's for, and that salsa verde sign dressing, it's, it all works. Probably, realistic for me, the, the pasta's the bit I would be using the most at home. Make, I, we make our own pasta every now and then, but never one as herby or as vibrant as that. What I also liked, and I've actually never thought of or seen before, was the technique of having just such a long roll and just zigzagging it back and forth through the, so you're not cutting in cut to make sure it fits neatly, you're just wrapping it back and forth. It's actually easier, smarter and quicker. It's green, it's tasty, it pulls, it's really light. You absolutely get the badge. Well, thank you. Well well, done. It means a lot, I'm clawing my way back. Um, which leaves it up to us to decide on a winner. I keep wanting to go back for more, but I don't know if I can. So our criteria for judging this, Ebba's, you're obviously very much up against it. So we thought if you can create a dish that passes for the dish it's supposed to be and there to be no noticeable difference um, in quality because of your restriction in budget. And we felt that this absolutely did that and therefore this dish is the winner. It's not to say that that wasn't staggering. You're kind of in that position where you can only mess it up. Yeah, yeah. So, and you, you absolutely didn't. These are two extremes and I don't think anybody would ever at home go to those extremes. I mean, we always say when it comes to all food, but buy the best that you can afford. And that might be somewhere in the middle of this. It might be slightly more towards the budget angle or whatever, but yeah, stunning dishes. Well, over to you. As much as you can't taste them, which of these did you like the look of the most? And were there any particular hints or tips that you'll be using in your cooking at home? Let us know down below. And let us know what should we be battling Ebbers against next in our next budget challenge. Our next budget challenge. We have an app. It's called Meal Packs and helps you plan and then cook a week's worth of meals using one set of ingredients, saving you money, cutting down on food waste and answering the age-old question, what should we have for dinner? It's free to try for a whole month. The link is in the description box below. Oh, Resident Italian. Oh, a real Italian. Why don't you come and have a look at this? Adriano, crispy bits and lasagna or not? Oh, okay. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> no, no. Resident Italian offended. <laughs>